Lift off. We have ignition. We have ignition and we have lift off. Lift off, crew nine. Lift off, crew nine. Spectacular. Spectacular. Oh my God, look at it go. Oh my God. Holy God, there went the sonic boom. Good morning and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Clearly, I'm sure you can tell from that segment that due to bad internet connections, did not really do justice to what I got to witness that this amazing launch. However, I had a number of colleagues at the launch as well who recorded all of it without trying to stream it online. I'm going to try to get access to some of their footage and bring that to you later because this was an experience unlike any other one. When I got to watch this launch, I was a mere three kilometers away from the bad, far closer than civilians are ever allowed to be. I was with the traditional press corps. All of the major networks were there. And amazingly, so was I. Things have definitely changed with my relationship with NASA. And wow, they are definitely treating me with a great deal of respect now. And I'm very grateful for that. All of that being the case, though, when I watched this launch, it did didn't appear that we were looking at anything different from a typical nominal SpaceX Falcon 9 launch. A flawless liftoff, flawless flight, flawless return to the pad. Everything looked absolutely fine. And indeed, the insertion of the Crew Dragon spacecraft into the proper trajectory to take it to the International Space Station, all of that went very well also. So it came as a shock to me, and I think to many many other people when we found out that an anomaly took place, another anomaly with a Falcon 9, the third in less than 90 days, and the second involving a Falcon 9 upper stage. Again, this was nothing serious. Crew Dragon was delivered into the proper trajectory without any difficulties. The crew was never in any kind of danger. At least they didn't appear to be. Obviously, if this malfunction had taken place earlier than when it actually did, then yeah, they would have had to have been working on possible re-entry procedures for Crew 9 to get them safely back to Earth, which would have been a real problem given how poorly Starliner performed. We would have problems with both of our crew rated space solutions at this point, but fortunately that is not what happened. Instead, it was just a slightly off nominal re-entry burn designed to put the second stage into a safe location during re-entry and the second stage ended up splashing down a bit outside the projected landing area. Now, the projected landing area was a pretty damn big region of the ocean. So the fact that the upper stage did miss this landing corridor is not unimportant. It could have been problematic to commercial air traffic or boats and ships in the region who were expecting expecting that the upper stage of Falcon 9 could not possibly splash down anywhere near them, but it turns out that there was nothing in the region, neither really should there have been, given the fact that there's never a whole lot of traffic to the south of New Zealand. That being the case, though, it's still something significant, and so this time, SpaceX grounded their Falcon 9 fleet rather than waiting for the FAA to do it for them, because technically, this is something that could have presented a threat to the public. Whenever you have an upper stage splashing down in an area outside the projected landing zone, that is a mishap. Not a serious mishap, but nevertheless a mishap and definitely cause for an investigation and for grounding the Falcon 9 fleet, which is what has happened. There was a launch scheduled for yesterday that was already put off, and we're probably going to have this 
this affect a few other launches as well. I'm sure the investigation is not going to take a very long time, and I also predict that the FAA is not going to lock down Falcon 9 for anything like 60 days or even 30 days, and that's because the public was never really in any kind of danger. Once again, I'm showing you the re-entry corridor and just how difficult it would have been for an off-nominal re-entry burn to put it over anything inhabited. You can see the re-entry corridor at the far lower left side of your screen and then you can see how far it would take for the trajectory to bring it over Mexico and the middle of the United States. It would require a ridiculous error in the re-entry burn to cause the upper stage to enter the atmosphere this far off target. But then again, not impossible because keep in mind the speed of an orbital trajectory, the rotation of the Earth, etc. All of that means that if the space spacecraft or the upper stage re-enters the atmosphere say 20 minutes later than was originally anticipated then yeah that's probably going to take it over an inhabited area so it's something that has to be taken seriously and again this is why SpaceX has grounded their Falcon 9 fleet right now especially given the fact that we have had three anomalies two involving upper stages and one during a landing procedure again in my opinion opinion all of these things are unrelated but still some people are probably seeing a pattern develop here especially with the upper stages keep in mind that the upper stage of falcon 9 is not something that is reused the, this is all brand new equipment involved in these upper stages does that suggest that there's some sort of quality control issue going on with the new manufacturing taking place with falcon 9 well once again i I doubt it because given the sheer volume of Falcon 9 launches, hundreds and hundreds of launches without a problem, we've got to expect that these things are going to start cropping up eventually. No launch provider is perfect. As close as SpaceX got to that point, they too are mortal and so their rockets are going to experience these sorts of things from time to time. It's just unfortunate that we've had three problems in such a short span of time and that definitely needs to be looked into. Given the high rate of turnover that exists at SpaceX, it is not an easy place to work. The working hours are very difficult. There isn't a whole lot of accommodation given to people who want to spend time with family and that sort of thing. Your career comes first at that company and that doesn't always work for people, especially now that Elon is moving the headquarters away from California down to Texas and who knows how much much of the operations needs to go there as well in order to support all of that. It's very possible that SpaceX has lost some valuable talent during that process, and some of that talent may have come in on the quality control side of things. Again, I doubt it, but still, it's a possibility that needs to be seriously considered after all of these events. And God forbid, if we have any more of them occur in the near future, that could really put this entire program in jeopardy. So, an investigation is needed. We need to track down why these things are happening. Why a previously flawless rocket has been experiencing these issues. And get Falcon 9 back to the nearly perfect record that we've all gotten used to. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please check the description for various ways to support this content, including my upcoming trip to the IAC convention in Milan in October. That's really important. I think I'm going to be able to get a lot of good content out of that. So please don't forget it if you'd like to support it. Once again, stay angry about space.